The Rebel Capitalist Show. Do you think that additional efficiency and technology would equal uh, a, a sound money from a standpoint of confidence? Because we're talking about people losing confidence in the dollar. Do you think? That well, you the, don't. You, you see don't what I'm saying? To, yeah, it doesn't have to be an either or. What what you do? The benefit of digital currency is that you can get rid of a system that's based on institutions that has the systemic risk of an institutional failure taking down the entire economy. You can completely eliminate that risk. But what you still got is basically digital fiat money. Well, if right. you, if you right. want to be sound money, what you do is you say, let's have a digital currency system, which is actually backed. And there's several people doing this right now with gold bullion. So it is really backed by sound money but it still has the advantages in terms of how you can uh, you can uh, transmit it. Now, immediately, what's going to happen is if you try to develop that sound money thing where every, uh, you know, every uh, online bullion buck coin is backed by an ounce of gold in a real vault someplace, that'll last for a while until people forget why it was important that it was designed that way. And then they'll change it to where it's always redeemable for that ounce of gold, but they don't have to have all of the ounces of gold because they know from experience that yeah. nobody's ever going to all want it at once. So as long as we got enough to cover the, what we think, according to our models, is the, the, the most that anybody's ever going to ask for at a time, it's okay to fractionalize that and not really keep all the gold. And then it eventually gets into you know b- becoming a fiat system again. I think the greater risks, though, are the functionality. What is What is money and how does credit work? Well, The only way that we know to design both a money system and also to have credit in an economy is this 300 year old design, which was really brilliant when it was, you know, like 300 years ago, called the fractional reserve banking system. My contention is this whole cryptocurrency trend of the last 12 years. This is just the the very, very beginning. It hasn't started yet. What's going to happen next is we're going to realize that there's an opportunity to re-engineer money itself, not just replace the paper money with digital you know, bitcoins, but to design a replacement for the fractional reserve banking system, which mm. makes credit possible so that now the way we think about credit, the way that credit is delivered and all the assumptions that all the bankers, all the investment bankers have about how their institutions provide credit to the world and everything, it's all going to be re-engineered by a new money system the people who invent and design the money system are going to have incredible advantage and conflict of interest over everybody else because they can design features into it to benefit themselves that it will take decades for everybody else to even figure out what's going on. They can, des- you know, if you think about the consequences of the way lending works today, okay, when, when there's all this lending and it creates all this, you know, this, this debt, well, that, that leads to a situation which eventually, as Dr. Lacey Hunt, you described his arguments very well earlier, when you get over indebted, it leads to deflationary pressures and so forth. What if all of those assumptions, everything we know about how fractional reserve banking works and how lending works, were completely thrown out the window and a bunch of guys in Silicon Valley, and we know we can trust guys in Silicon Valley because we've never been let down by like the social media inventors in terms of over-influencing society. Right. Suppose the <laughs> same group of boys and girls in Silicon I, I Valley. Mention, that, I want to mention, I want to point out your sarcasm there, Eric, for, for okay. the audience. <laughs> Imagine that that same crowd that, that invented social media and, and you know gave us the, the iPhone that, that takes your fingerprint and sends it to the NSA. And, and you know, when, <laughs> yeah. when they introduced that product, there were people lined up outside the Apple store around the block in sleeping bags, despite the fact that you could pre-order it online to have it delivered by FedEx to your house on the day that they introduced it. Um, You know, that whole phenomenon of of what's going on, imagine that growing to the point where Facebook or Google or somebody has invented better money. The way the credit is created is more innovative, more, uh, more flexible, and it has better features than the fractional reserve banking system offered. It's a better it's basically Silicon Valley re-engineers fractional reserve banking 
not to make it well, on the surface, the advertisement, just like social media, it's, it's to make it better for everybody. What we want to do is just give everybody in the world something free social media that you'll really love. There's no downside to it to you. And we're giving it to you for free. So how could you how could you possibly argue what they're going to be doing will be much worse than the social media agenda. What they'll be doing is redesigning how money itself actually works how credit formation occurs, and they'll be designing features into it to benefit themselves. And it is scary because we do need this. It is better, but it is beyond government bureaucrats' ability to understand all the technolo technological nuances. So you're not going to have a, a government regulator from the, you know, the, the newly created federal cryptocurrency oversight board come in and understand, uh, like Jeff Snyder could understand, what we're going to do to re-engineer the fractional reserve banking system to eliminate this whole M1, M2 concept and, 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 and redo the way credit works. Uh, and, and I'm not, and there's lots of different ideas that I have. Some of them are in my book, but you know, what am I saying? How would credit be different in the current system? I don't know, but I know that Silicon Valley guys are good at re-engineering the way old stuff works into new ways that benefits them in not so obvious ways. And I think that's what's coming. So the race will be on for who designs the currency system that actually replaces the U.S. dollar as the uh, as the central focal point of the global economy. But the why? Bitcoin why is maximalists it just, think it's I was them. just going to you know, go there. So. Yeah, I was going to say why? Why not? Just a quick Reader's Digest version of why it's not Bitcoin. Um, I think. Well, first, first of all, let me tell you why not. Then let me tell you why I've been wrong so far. What I've said is the reason why not is because governments have a monopoly over issuing money. Almost nobody questions that, even though historically it wasn't always government that issued money. Nobody questions that. There's a huge benefit to government to issuing money. Government ought to be smart enough to figure out that when that monopoly is threatened, they will use the force that they have as government, you know, guns and, and jail cells and so forth to uh, stop that from happening. Well, why have I gotten that one wrong so far? Because this technology is new enough and governments are stupid enough that, as far as I can tell, most people in the U.S. federal government and the Federal Reserve still don't get it. They, they, they don't understand that digital currency is inherently superior to, uh, to fiat conventional currency. And what they're focusing on is they're looking at the design features of Bitcoin. It was designed intentionally to be pseudonymous so that it's not really always clear who the actors are. All, not all the accounts are, you know, titled to somebody that can be, you know, you can't seize it by the IRS. They're looking at it and they're saying, this is not a money system that we would ever have designed or approved of. You know, we're not going to recognize this as a real money system. No, of course not. It was designed to be exactly what you don't want. What happens when they finally wake up and say, oh, but wait, the underlying technology, the invention of the secure digital bearer asset would allow us to design this Orwellian digital currency system that would allow everything to be tracked, monitored, and controlled by the government. And all we have to do is basically steal the, the technology innovations that the crypto guys invented and then apply the exact opposite set of design objectives to designing our own CBDC system. Well, they're already doing that. They haven't, for some reason, gotten tough on Bitcoin yet and tried to really outlaw it. I always said it'll never get to the point of serious institutional adoption because it'll be outlawed first. Well, guess what? I was wrong about that. We're searing, seeing serious institutional adoption of Bitcoin as an asset class. And the more that big institutions with lots of lobbying power and influence, politicians in their pocket, own this thing, the less likely it is to be outlawed. Bitcoin does pose the risk to governments of having the whole world just decide they like Bitcoin better and they're going to, you know, no longer accept the government's monopoly over issuing money. We'd rather use Bitcoin. I can't see it getting to that point because governments have so much to gain by waking up and realizing that they could use this technology to advance their own agendas opposite the design of Bitcoin, that they'll eventually do that. And I used to think the governments would finally wake up. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, it's really more likely that Silicon Valley will see this opportunity and they'll do one of two things or maybe some very clever combination of both things. They'll either say to governments, look, you need a C don't let these cryptocurrencies take over the world. You need to maintain your monopoly, but you need us, Silicon Valley, to build you a super cool digital currency system that is going to work better than you know your existing system. You know, let us design it for you and build it for you. 
and sell it to you and you know we'll get mega rich on this but then i realized wait a minute they're much better off if they use what silicon valley is good at which is just giving stuff away seemingly for free when in reality it's very expensive because it's stealing all of your data uh, what they did with social media what if they just really focused on making money a lot easier to use so that all your transfers uh, you know you can do everything in your phone very easily it's it's all based on facial recognition and fingerprints and all these convenience things that are also collecting your fingerprint and your facial recognition and, and, and you know saving them in a database that can be sold later to governments mm, so right. when what let's let's suppose it's not libra which has already kind of been struck down although it seems like they're trying to resurrect it let's suppose google or apple or facebook or somebody comes up with Libra Plus, you know, a new di Sovereign Valley digital, excuse me, Silicon Valley digital currency system. But they realize this time they can't just ignore the government. So what they do is they go to the government and say, listen, here's what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're building this, This it's gonna be kind of like Libra that pissed you guys off, but we're doing it differently this time. We're building in all these features that are gonna collect everybody's thumbprint, everybody's facial, and we're ready to sign a, a completely confidential agreement right now with the federal government that are you just back off and let us do this because we are going to make the world better with better money we're going to also give you like this back channel of, of free you know c collection of everybody's data right, we're going right. to design it so that we can deliver the government not only the ability to trace everything that happened in the history of this monetary system but to go and claw it back and seize it retroactively after the fact we're going to give you these incredibly powerful law enforcement features that you don't need to go figure out how to design the system to do it we're going to build those features in you federal government let us be in charge let us google or, or facebook be in charge of designing how money works and what we'll give you in exchange is a much better stranglehold on society and its personal data than you could ever have imagined accomplishing yourself now matt put yourself in the shoes of the the federal reserve and they got the nsa you know director guy who's there uh and you know that that meeting and, and they're saying you know facebook or google we're going to design this incredible currency system everybody's going to love it and it's going to give the government much more control over everything than it ever had before who's not going to agree to that why wouldn't that happen uh, that's and it's what scares me the most because i think that silicon valley in partnership with the u.s federal government could mount the greatest assault on individual human liberties and, and and information rights in the history of mankind and i think that's probably coming and i think that it will go over as a great success in the eyes of most of the population because they'll have this cool new money where borrowing money is easier than it used to be where all your transfers and all your electronic things all happen very you know intuitively it's like stuff that was designed by apple not the stuff that was designed by citibank it, it's right, right, super right. easy to use it's it's automatic you, you you know scan your friend's face and say pay her a hundred dollars and you know it, it's automatic because it knows her face it's got it in the database that scares the hell out of you and me it sounds much better to the average person it sounds convenient i can just point my phone at my friend and, and her face is going to tell the sis i don't even have to know her bank account number it's going to automatically do it from her face that's cool man well you and I are, and a lot of your listeners are smart enough to think about the not so obvious consequences and, uh, <laughs> you know, knock on effects of that system existing and what it could be abused for in the future. Most people are not going to see that. They're just going to say better money. It, it comes from Facebook. It must be good. And the federal government endorses it because they're getting a bunch of stuff that we didn't even know about because it's in a sealed FISA court document someplace. That it turns out that every time you ever, you know, transfer, you know, spend a nickel on buying a, a piece of candy, you know, the government is tracking that in a database someplace.